Good evening. We're going to talk about viable reasons why Samsung is actually better than Apple. Reason number one is something that I like to ask people is what is one thing on your phone that you cannot avoid using if you are to use the phone at all? Some people say, oh, texting. I was like, no, you can make a, call, make a phone call without sending a text message. Other people say camera. Like, no, you can text without using the camera. Facebook? Come on. The one thing that you are forced to use to do anything on your smartphone is the display. You have to use the screen to do anything, except maybe plug it in. That puts it in a pretty, like, if it's the most crucial part of your phone, puts it in a pretty important spot. And in my opinion, should large should heavily influence your decision on which device you get. As we all know, Apple has been way behind the game in this department. Even with their new iPhone X OLED display, it's still not going to be as sharp as the new Samsung phones are. As the ones from, let's see, 2015 and up are. I'm kind of looking forward to when the iPhone 10 launches, just so we can see. Because something that I that I would always do is put is tell the person with an iPhone, say, okay, pull your phone out right now. I know you have YouTube on there, you do it. Some people are like, eh, eh, no, I don't. So I'll say, okay, just go to the browser. Although they're kind of at a disadvantage when they go to the browser because the browser cannot show videos in their full resolution like they can from the YouTube app, at least within iOS. But we, well, we pull, kitty, but we pull out YouTube and then I say, okay, search for scenery. And I search for scenery on my phone. Then I, I was like, all right, turn your brightness all the way up on both of them to level the playing field. And then we'll both tap on the same video. We'll wait for them to load and we'll start both of them at zero. And I'll put the phone side by side. And it's surprising to hear the kind of excuses that come out of these people's mouths. we are like, oh, but you, you must have done some kind of enhancing thing. Well, you, you edit that. You got a special version. I was like, no, you saw me look up the exact same video. Our screens destroy yours. That's just all there is to it. Like... There's no denying that. And, and the people who didn't make excuses, even if they did go on to buy an iPhone, regrettably, they're like, oh wow, like it, the clear winner every single time is the one that has the AMOLED display. There's number two, camera control. Now, DxO Mark had rated the iPhone 8 to have the best camera of any smartphone of all time, but they only held that title for a few weeks when the Pixel 2 came out. And then the XL Mark gave the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL the best rated camera on any smartphone ever. Now, I've seen a Pixel 2 XL in person and just the screen just seemed too, it seems yellowed. There was, it was too warm. It was almost like a very, very light opacity. I think that's how you say it, opacity, opacity. Blue light filter was on. It was, it was just, there's something about it that, that I didn't really care for. Now the camera stabilization, top freaking notch like i love it i didn't test it side by side with the s8 but it was pretty damn good but main thing about camera control is when you open up the iphone okay you have square panorama video photo slow-mo and portrait i believe and you have the option to turn the flash on or off to set a timer to turn hdmi HD, hdr pff, on or off or auto i think they have an auto hdr maybe i can't remember and to add filter skins, I guess, like live filter skins over it, which you can do on either one, either phone. That's it. There is no shutter speed control. There is no ISO. There is no white balance. There is no manual focus. There is no, what's the other one? There is no exposure. There's none of that. You can forget about it. You'll have to download a third-party app, and I admittedly don't have very much experience with third-party apps that control iPhone's cameras, so I can't really speak with much authority on that subject. However, it's a different story when you open up the camera on one of the more recent Samsung phones. Let me show you a little picture, a comparison. And this was from my coworker's iPhone 7 and my S8. Look at that. These photos came from sticking the phone in a dark cabinet, setting the timer on 10 minutes, no, not 10 minutes, 10 seconds, and then shutting the door. So it's in total darkness, or not total darkness, but very, very dark. Taking a picture of the Gear 360. The one in the middle is by just putting, what are you doing, kitty? Is by just putting the S8 inside that cabinet and without editing it or fine tuning it at all. But the one on the far right, that's what happens when you have full control over your camera. That is on a 10 second exposure, ladies and gentlemen. That's the best the S8 camera can do in an environment like that. And look to the left. That's the best the iPhone 7 camera can do. Now, 
again, I have not tested this with the iPhone 8 because I haven't had a chance to get one inside that same cabinet. But I can almost guarantee you that between the picture on the right and whatever the iPhone 8 can come up with, the picture on the right is going to do better. I promise you. So if you want the bit, like if you want full control over your pictures, come on. It is a no-brainer that you have the better camera with the Samsung phones. Another big one is storage constraints. Now this really this goes without saying, but how, but I mean I ask those of you who are watching this while using an iPhone, how many times have you had to delete your memories and your applications that you would not have deleted had the phone not said insufficient storage or not enough space or whatever the phones or whatever the iPhones say. For most of you, it's going to be at least once. Some of you, it might be all the time because you cannot expand it. Why? Because it makes Apple so much more fucking money. That's why. Because, <clears throat> like, if they can if they can jack up the price between one storage selection and the next. Obviously, 64 gigabytes is just not enough for people anymore, especially if you're going to be shooting a whole lot of 4K video. So they go to, what, 128, I think, is the next step up, or even 256 for one of the models. I can't remember. I would probably be wrong on that, but you get my general point. It's like, oh, well, we make so much more money off of people who want more storage, and we know they're going to want more storage because they're tired of that annoying message that makes them have to delete stuff in order just to fit a freaking update that sometimes is required for an app that they use all the time to run in the first place. What the f***? That's bullshit. Like, if, the, if those are just three reasons. I could go on and on and on. But those are three reasons that are, that do not apply to, like, niche things. You know, like, having your own file browser and being able to browse through it like a computer. That's a niche thing. Not everybody wants that, but I guarantee you everybody wants a good camera. Everybody wants to not run out of storage and have to delete shit in order to fit more updates or pictures or apps on their phone or music and people want a good display but surprisingly enough actually people don't want a good display near as much as they want those other two things but still like it makes no sense to me actually it does make sense fucking iMessage and FaceTime which is another thing that I might cover in the next video a solution to that multiple solutions to that yeah yeah that's a good idea well have a good night I'll see you in the morning and stay beaming